Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video about Will Byers. So this video in particular, in honor of Pride Month, is specifically about his sexuality. You can probably tell by the title or the thumbnail, Will Byers is gay. He's fruity. Are you speculative of that? Maybe. I know a lot of people are, for some reason. I think a lot less people are after season four. But I'm here to break it down for you. As your resident Will Byers stan on YouTube, I pride myself in knowing a lot about this character because he is my absolute favorite, and he has been since the first time I watched Stranger Things back in the summer of 2016. The second he did not know what to do in the Dungeons and Dragons game, and he was freaking out, I was like, that's me. And then of course he was the one that got abducted, which sucked, but he's here now. He's, 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 well, he's not doing well, but I love Will Byers so much. I have my collection of Funkos right here, and it's been very interesting to watch kind of the conversation around his sexuality and the way that it's been addressed throughout the show and all of that, just the way his character has developed throughout the past four seasons and over the course of the series. A lot has happened. I'm excited to talk about it with you all, and yeah, I feel like I need a cool intro with this pride flag, so let's let's uh, start this very fruity video. Wait, that, woo, I can't make a good transition. I tried my best. Many of you um, probably need this to be broken down for you, or want it to be broken down for you, because the interesting thing about this conversation around Will Byers' sexuality is that this has been something that the Duffers have been hinting towards since, not even just hinting, but like pretty much saying outright, uh, since they were pitching the show. So it's important to, to address right off the bat that this is not something new, this is not something fans conjured up as like a, a ship kind of thing. This is very, very real and it has been for a long time. So. It all started with the Stranger Things show bible. For those of you who don't know, a show bible is for kind of pitching a TV show where you can make this big document, almost like a little booklet, um, and you can make it, or a PowerPoint, and you can make it as pretty or boring as you want, but usually you, you play it up and get it to match the style of your show because it's helping people want to buy your show. So in the show bible, you break down the plot, you do a synopsis, a logline, character details, um, episode rundowns, stuff like that. And of course the main characters are, or characters that are incredibly important to the plot as well, are all broken down within the show bible. So of course Will Byers is part of the show bible because he's this core, he's core in the group of friends and he's integral to the series and especially the first season. So in the show Bible, and I will include images to aid this conversation, um, they talk about Will being as a kid who's struggling with sexual identity issues. This is something, as we can see, was an initial part of his character right off the bat. Of course, things change as shows get developed and writing happens, and as time passes, not every character detail will be the same throughout. Like, for example, the, like other character details are different. Dustin's a little bit different. You know, they, the actors can inspire the character, the writers can change their mind, stuff like that. So while that is integral to what the original idea for the show was, of course it's not set in stone that he would have that arc as a character in canon. But it is important to note that that is how they envisioned the character to begin with. Moving on, when we finally get season one, obviously Will is really not there much in season one. He's in the first 10 minutes and like the last 20 minutes-ish. So he's really not there a lot. There's not room for character exploration. We don't get to know him that well, face to face at least. We do get to know Will through the eyes of characters that know him and love him, or and or love him. Examples of this are his friends. We know that Will is loyal, he's a very good friend, 
He loves D&D. We learn about him through the eyes of his brother Jonathan. We know that he has great taste in music. He loves Should I Stay or Should I Go. He is tough enough to take care of himself, so Jonathan was okay with the idea of him being home alone for one night when he took the extra shift, which is when Will went missing. Joyce describes him to Hopper when she's reporting him as missing as a sensitive kid. She says that his father, Lonnie, would say he's a queer and would call him the F slur and that he's not like most. And that's one of the first concrete things that we learn about his identity and how he's perceived is through his mother and describing like how his father treats him, what he's like, he's sensitive, and we in the same vein, learn about him through school bullies who call him a fairy and a queer and all these things. So not great, obviously. Coming out of season one, we know these good things and also these negative perceptions of Will. And you don't want to assume that just because someone's called queer that they are queer and that they because they're sensitive or dress differently than they're all of a sudden queer, like, those things have no correlation, but it is important from a writing perspective that that's what the Duffers want the audience to know about this character. He's strong, he's strong-willed, he's, but he's also sensitive, he's bullied because he has this, he's, he's different, and he, he looks, like, stereotypically queer, I suppose. There's just, he's just different. He's not like most. So, Again, while this is not something that is yet canon in concrete, it is still something that the Duffers thought important enough to have repeated multiple times throughout season one as a large part of his character's essence, right? Then moving on to season two, and this is the season where I caught on, and I was like, oh, it's slightly less subtle, but given everything in season one, and this is coming from someone who had seen season one like 15 times leading up to season two, I basically knew it by heart. I could repeat most of the first episode, which I don't know if that's an accomplishment or not, I, but I saw it a lot. I watched it a lot. So these things that were said about Will, my favorite character, were always fresh in my mind. I was excited to learn more about him. And we do learn more about him. We do learn a lot more about him in season two. Specifically in episode eight was a really poignant moment of when he's possessed by the Mind Flayer and they're trying to get through to him. And they're recalling pivotal memories from Will's life. They're trying to break him, like get that connection and break him out of his shell. They bring up, should I stay or should I go? Mike talks about how they met on the swing sets. Um, Joyce talks about his birthday being March 22nd. There's, there's a lot of nice little moments. And she also talks about how he drew Joyce a rainbow ship. It was a spaceship with all the colors of the rainbow. And she was so proud of his rainbow ship. When you turned eight, I gave you that huge box of crayons. Do you remember that? And all your friends, they got you Star Wars toys. But all you wanted to do was straw with all your new colors. And you drew this big spaceship, a rainbow ship, is what you called it. And you, you must have used every color in the box. And you were so embarrassed. <laughs> but I was so proud. I was so so proud. That wording is so queer. I can I, I can't. <laughs> it's very important to me that all of you just recognize that for a second. And at the snowball, he's asked to dance with a girl, clearly does not want to say yes. He looks very uncomfortable. But after being nudged by Mike to go dance with her, he does. And she's wearing like a nice little rainbow clip in her hair, which was probably unintentional, but still it's a nice little Easter egg if you are one of the Will is Gay truthers circa season two, like myself. <laughs> but there's some things that are very, very, very standout-ish. Um, and in particular, the one that I want to mention is in the script for season two. It says that while Will was like is going through a nice little montage as every breath you take plays 
and they're talking about how they're all dancing and everything and it says Will is dancing with the girl who called him Zombie Boy but he's not looking at her instead he's looking at Mike who's dancing with Eleven that was written in the script to be a very queer moment why they didn't do it on camera I'm not entirely sure maybe it's just like I, I personally believe that also maybe this the energy of the scene and how it was like kind of closing the season it didn't really call for like one one more reveal in the way that it was particularly edited but it would have been nice I think it would have been a nice thing to throw in but also it would have made me even more impatient <laughs> for the storyline to develop but that kind of segues into his relationship with Mike Anyone on social media that has anything to do with Stranger Things is probably aware of the Byler ship. I personally love Byler. I love it a lot. I have since season two came out and this script moment was revealed and just they had so much, the two actors in particular and, and their characters, they have so much chemistry and they have so many amazing moments together from season one all the way to season three, four. Oh my God season four. I'm so used to not having a fourth season. I believe it's quite clear now in canon that Will has a crush on Mike. Honestly, I found it, I completely ran with it after this moment in the script where he's watching her instead of the girl he's watching him instead of the girl that he's dancing with. But I wasn't sure how canon they were going to go with this since, again, it was cut out of the actual final cut of the episode. Season three comes around, Will is not gonna fall in love. He just wants to play D&D &D with his friends. Let's face it, he kinda lost a big chunk of his childhood to being in the Upside Down and the trauma associated with it and the Mind Flayer and all this awful stuff that's happened to him and his never-ending link to the Upside Down as a result of all of it. Will's gone through it. He kind of didn't have the relaxing last few years of, of adolescence as he probably wanted to, so going into their teenage years and the summer before high school, he just wants to hang out with his friends. He wants things to be normal. I believe season three is that phase of your coming out journey where you are like really pining after people, like after someone and like you're just like uncomfortable with the world around you because you're starting to get the sense that something's off but you're not, you don't know what it is and you just know that like Say if you have a crush on someone, you just want to be around this person. Like, you just want to be around them. And you don't realize yet, it doesn't click yet, that it's for a completely different reason than just being friends and playing d and I believe that's where he is in Season 3. And to me, this, there's a moment in Season 3 where everything, where him being gay and where him having, maybe even having a crush on Mike being canon, is all confirmed. And that's during his fight with Mike when he storms out, when they won't take playing D&D seriously, when they finally agree to play. And it's raining and they're in Mike's garage and he's like, You're destroying everything and for what? So you could swap spit with some stupid girl? Elle's not stupid. It's not my fault you don't like girls. I'm not trying to be a jerk, okay? It just holds on Will's hurt expression. And he there's just like look of betrayal in his eyes. And Noah Schnapp is much too good of an actor for that to be a coincidence. And the Duffers and Sean Levy are like way too incredible at what they do for that like hold on Will in that sp after that specific line to be not important. Like it's it's important. They hold on Will for so long and he looks so hurt after. It's not my fault you don't like girls and the fact that it's worded like that too. I don't believe that that's what Mike meant. That he, I don't think he was like saying like, oh it's not my fault you're gay. I just think Mike meant, it's not my fault you don't like girls yet. But the yet is not included in the script. And that is important. And then it's kind of dropped and we go into season four. And season four continues the Byler conversation. Byler is canon. It is canon. Is it canon? Well, it's canon at least right now as a as a one-sided pining, oh my god, like I'm in love with my best friend kind of thing. And I'm pretty sure that Will now knows this. Specifically after his it's hard to open up to people talk with Mike in season four because he's like, what if they don't like that? Like it's, it's hard to be vulnerable with people like that when he's talking to Mike after they buried the agent. Mike has always been there for Will in every sense of the word except 
when it comes to this whole relationship thing with Elle and ever since Elle got back he's been there for Will a lot less but he was always there for Will when they were little kids and they were both being bullied when and they didn't have any other friends in season one he led the charge to try and find Will. In season two, he barely ever left his side. Mike cares so much about Will so deeply, and Will kills, cares so much about Mike so deeply. And while Mike has gotten distracted by Elle, Will has just always had eyes for Mike. He's always standing right next to him, like almost pressed against him. Like he is always focused on Mike. And if that's not proof enough from like an acting and staging standpoint, his painting is kind of the final nail in the coffin. Why am I rotating? Okay, Will's painting. Such a beautiful, 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 beautiful way of having his character do the whole coming out thing. Will has always been able to communicate better through art than he has been through words, always. That is an established fact of his character. This painting was first introduced to us in episode one of season four, volume one, The Hellfire Club. When Elle is writing a letter to Mike, she says, Will has been spending a lot of time painting. He won't show me what it is. I think it might be for a girl he likes. He's been acting very weird lately. That's the first time we mention Will potentially liking a girl. And that is shut down really quickly in the first episode when a girl tries to flirt with Will and he just like recoils so visibly. He is so uncomfortable <laughs> when the girl tries to play footsie with him. And if there was a girl he actually really liked, she would be shown in the first episode. But no. No, 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 no. Who is that painting for? That painting is for Mike. Episode two of season four. Mike shows up to California. Will goes to give him a giant hug. Mike just gives him an awkward shoulder pat. Will looks very hurt. It's crushing. But what is Will excitedly holding? the painting. Mike asks what it was. After receiving that half-assed hug, Will is like, uh, nothing. It's just this painting I've been working on. And as they leave the airport, he like borderline crumples it up, but he doesn't. He keeps it in his room. Elle thinks that this painting is for someone that I have a crush on because it's so important to me and I won't show it to anyone else and I spend so much time on it. It's actually for Mike. Do I give Mike this painting? Is that going to be a coming out moment? Will he like me if I come out? Like, in any sense of the word, will he still want to be my friend? Again, this is the 80s. This is the height of the AIDS crisis. There's not a good time to come out. And we know that Mike is unconditionally there for Will, but he also comes from a very Republican family that very strongly supported the Bush-Reagan campaign in 1984, and Reagan basically ignored AIDS and hated gay people, and is part of the reason why the AIDS epidemic killed off almost an entire generation of gay people as well, specifically gay men. <clears throat> Reagan, not an ally. Wheeler family supported Reagan. At least Ted did. I don't know that Nancy and Holly's way too young, but I don't know even if Karen would, but definitely Nancy and Mike I don't think would, but Will, like when you're coming out, it is terrifying. You start to question every relationship you ever have with anyone because suddenly this thing about you could change everything. And you're terrified of it and you're terrified of how other people will view it. And it's a very overwhelming and confusing experience and you go through it alone, especially in the 80s when there's not media, like a surplus of media like there is right And even now, in many places in the world, there's not a surplus of gay media or queer media. And even in the US, there's not enough, but it, although to some it feels like there's too much, which I would argue is, of course. But Will didn't really have many resources when it came to representation, and therefore that definitely made his coming out journey even more confusing and overwhelming and terrifying. Because there weren't that many stories about people who had a better life after coming out. Instead, there were stories in the media about people dying, or being hate crimed or murdered after coming out, and it was not an easy time to be gay. And, I mean, it never really is, but definitely not in 1986 and especially after being bullied his entire life for that exact thing before he even realized that that was an honest part of his identity. His father left partially because of his marriage with Joyce but like also largely probably because of his relationship with Will and he just straight up did not like or respect Will. I don't believe he loved him 
Lonnie just walked out, and before he walked out, he tried to force him to be more masculine. He called him all sorts of slurs and just treated him in such a disgusting way. And I don't blame Will for being absolutely terrified to not only speak up for himself, but to speak up for Elle when she's being bullied because frankly, he doesn't really owe anyone anything because no minority really does. Will has just been put down his entire life, not only by the people around him, but also by the freaking universe and another dimension and like against all odds, he is just put down and put down and put down and put down. Mike is one of those rare people that has been a constant for him, but starting in season three, that constant starts to waver. And in season four, I think he's really he's really scared that that it might not be the time and place. Um, it might not be right. Honestly, sometimes that secret can be so big that it feels like it's worth more than your life itself. Because it's not just your life, it's your reputation. It's the level of love that people might have for you. It's really scary. I think it's very touching that in season four, Mike has opened up the door again in their friendship and he's he's really apologized for, for not reaching out to Will and he's apologized um, for just how, how he's behaved as a friend and he's made sure that Will's known that he's still there for him and Will takes the painting with them before they leave. So Will still has that painting and he's going to show it to Mike in volume two of season four or volume five or season five, depending on how the season ends. But I'm hoping, I'm thinking, because there's some behind the scenes shots of season four, volume two, and I'm thinking that they're gonna have one more heart to heart and that's when it's gonna happen. And I can't wait to see what the painting is. I asked for some theories and some of you believe that it might actually be the swing set that they met on. I don't think it's going to be like gay fan art level of like Mike and Will kissing or a portrait of Mike. Maybe it could be a portrait of Mike. It could be their D&D &D characters. But I think the swing set where they first met would be really poetic and it would be a nice callback to season two. So much of this season has called back to seasons one and two. And that would just be a nice another nice moment. So I'm not entirely sure what it's gonna be, but I'm so excited to find out. I'm so impatient and I just wanna know. Ugh. I'm excited to see where it continues to go, but I think it's unquestionable at this point that Will has eyes for Mike in a romantic way. The painting is like not only the final nail in the coffin, but it puts the coffin in the ground and buries it in dirt. It is like, absolutely official that Will has a crush on Mike. I personally have had by their fan art on the wall of the Stranger Things writer's room since season three came out and they did the Stranger Fan wall thing. That's been, my by their fan art has literally been on the wall. It's something that is has been in the writer's mind, has been in fans' mind for a long time now. And now it's in the mainstream's mind, which is very exciting. It's a canon ship. It is something that could happen. It has been addressed by the writers. It's not just a fan theory. It is a thing. Will it happen? As a fan, and as a fan of Byler, and a fan of Will, and just, and a fan of Mike, and obviously, as a fan of the whole show, but particularly this storyline and this ship, I want it to happen so badly. <laughs> so badly. So badly. I want it to happen. I, I literally cannot get that through to you enough. I want it to happen so badly. And I spend time on Stan Twitter and I'm just like overwhelmed by by Stans and, and their energy that it is reciprocated. Finn Wolfhard, bless his soul. He really acts his heart out. And he does look at Will as Mike in a very delicate and fragile and caring and loving way. And again, their bond, their friendship propels so much of this series, which is very an underrated bond, by the way. But I think I had canon Mike as being bi, very strongly, very strongly. And I would like to specify again, Will is not, as far as we know in canon, the reason I keep calling him gay and not bi or pan or anything like that is because he's shown absolutely no interest in any girl or woman or female character, or female aligning character throughout this entire series. 
nor has he been alluded to ever doing that by the writers. So I'm just going to go with the gay headcanon, and that's why I keep calling them that. I believe Mike is probably bi. I love that idea. I love bi rep. Here for it. But <laughs> why did I do that? I think it would be very nice, and it would be a very incredible stride for not only television, but for this TV show to have such a beautiful slow burn like this. It would be absolutely perfect from a representation and just a fan perspective. I would be obsessed with it. I mean, I already am. I want it to happen so badly. Do I think it could happen? I like, don't want to say this out loud. I'm going to give it a generous 30% chance. <laughs> and I say that not because I want to. And this is some, coming from someone who like sees the way that Mike looks at Will and it's just like, if this was a gayer show, like if this were a Heartstopper, like Love Victor or anything like that, I would be like, oh my God, that this is a thing. This is a thing. This is a thing. Oh my God. But it's Stranger Things and I just don't know. I just don't know. And there are so many queer writers in that writer's room now and I respect them because they're doing such a good job with Robin and with will and all of this and I just really hope that it would happen but I really don't know because it feels like Malevin, even if it's not the end game, was just such an important part of the series at its heart that I'm not sure if they would introduce a new storyline romantically for Mike that includes a different person. And I know that many bilers would say, oh, it's not new, it's not introduced because Mike has been giving him the hard eyes, he just doesn't know it, because again, comes from a very Reagan fam loving family. But here's my logic for why Byler won't happen, at least in season four. I'm gonna just leave it at season four because I'm not gonna close the door on season five. From a writer's perspective, and from someone who studied film and just studies this show, and it's excellent use of foreshadowing and slowly building character and everything like that, there needs to be more hinting when it comes to Mike than there has been for it to not be absolute whiplash for mainstream viewers and even fans of the show that just aren't huge Byler fans, like, or on Stan Twitter. For example, I have a lot of friends that watch this show, and a lot of them are very big fans, just like myself. Go to Comic-Con dressed as Stranger Things characters, but Byler is not on their radar, and they're not on Stan Twitter, and they don't, they just watch the show, they watch it for other characters. I watch it for Will. Everyone watches it with a different lens, right? And every time I brought up that Mike le might like Will back, they're so caught off guard by that and they do not believe it at all. And I'm like, well, he always looks at him a certain way and he's always there for him and he never has trouble like having heart to hearts with uh, Will, but he always has trouble having heart to hearts with Elle and he can't tell Elle he loves her and blah, 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 blah. And there could be reasons for that, like his family having an awful marriage and blah, 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 blah. And him just being hard to open up and saying I love you can be really hard, but the fact that he has had trouble saying it for multiple seasons now and the fact that Malevin has had such an iffy relationship when they've been con together consistently and when they're more in the real world, like in season four, it says a lot about Malevin and the state of that relationship and I don't know that they'll end up together. I, I like go on this whole rant and I'm like, but it could happen. And then they're like, no, no, because I literally, they're like, I do not see, I'm getting no cues from the writers aside from like the acting being done by Finn that it would be reciprocated. So if Byler's going to happen, I think there needs to be some major um, Mike pining hinted at in season four volume two it's an unfortunate take it's one i'm sad about but i would even be okay with it being open-ended at this point i'm pretty positive that malevin might not end up together at the end of this series that might be open-ended as well all these relationships confuse me so much but what i do know is that as of where we are in season four but during this little hiatus before volume two comes out it is not, we're not in a place where Byler is ready to happen. And I, for that reason, I don't know if we ever will be because I don't know, there's not enough hinting so far that that's the route that the Duffers are going to take, that it's going to be a reciprocated canon relationship that is explored. 
and there's so much going on with the Upside Down and with Vecna and with their friends being in danger and with themselves being in danger that I just don't know that there's enough time in this series for them to fully go into that at this point. And that's heartbreaking, but this show can't go on forever and I'm perfectly okay with some things being open-ended, especially when it comes to relationships, because that leaves the door open for fan theories and head cannons and stuff that can't be disputed by canon going forward. I don't like the idea of representation being left up for interpretation. Everyone cares about their ship and especially queer people care about representation but straight people don't understand why that's so important to them and there's a lot of, you know, I'm not gonna play the blame game. The fact of the matter is I think it would just be nice if, if they left whoever Mike goes for in the future up for interpretation. At least I'd rather have that than have Bailey completely shot down because I think the fans deserve to envision a future where those two characters are happy without having to like break up Malevin again. And also Malevin have been broken up a million times and it's kind of getting boring and I can tell that they just don't work that well together in a relationship. I don't know, maybe they will, but I it's just hard because Elle has gone through so much and Mike is a teenage boy and it's just there's there's a lot a lot going on so I sincerely hope that Byler can be something that happens down the line for Will but I, I don't I don't know if it will ever be reciprocated and it's something that maybe I'll have a better grasp on maybe we'll all have a better grasp on when we finish season four speaking of things being open-ended and up for interpretation a lot of people have been asking Noah <laughs> about Will Byer's sexuality Will is, as we've established, very queerly, very queerly, very clearly gay. I'm in the camp that if Noah were to actually say anything confirming this, it would count as a spoiler. Because they haven't said it. They haven't given him his coming out moment overtly in the way they want to do it yet. As someone who is queer, I know a lot of you agree with me when I say that up for interpretation in terms of a character's sexuality is never something we want to hear. I have no idea what Noah Schnapp's sexuality is, nor am I going to assume or presume. I don't think that people should be assumed straight. I also don't think people should be assumed queer, and I don't, I don't know, I think it should just be left a mystery until they confirm it themselves. But I don't know if he's ever said anything. But I do know that since like season two, he has been dodging the questions about Will's sexuality left and right, and now that it's kind of crunch time, and because we're in a hiatus and we're left to sit with this Will is so clearly pining over Mike thing that happened in season four. I'm not surprised that people are asking Noah about it, but it's a shame that they are because I feel like he's set up to fail. I think it's going to be, he's, he said that it's, it might be left, it's left for, or up for interpretation. But I think the Duffers kind of swooped in and rescued him and said that it will be concretely addressed in volume two. And I believe that it will be concretely addressed. I think addressed. I think there will be absolutely no room for interpretation. He will be established as queer in the same way that Robin was, um, if if not even more clearly. And that this is something like somewhere that this that this character arc is is going towards. It's where the season is heading, and they, he just doesn't want to spoil it. But anyway, I think this will coming out arc is going to be finished by the end of season four and in season five we're going to see his life post coming out to Mike. I don't even know that he's come out to anyone else in his family. Jonathan clearly knows that there's something wrong and Joyce obviously is, is Joyce and I think Will could definitely confide in her but I don't know maybe Mike is the first person that he wants to tell. So we will find out. I'm excited to find out. I was freaking out watching season four and I'm very excited to watch the last two episodes and I do plan on reacting to it. How? I do not know. But I'm gonna do my gosh darn hardest to react to season four volume two of Stranger Things because I want my reaction on video <laughs> when he finally does come out. And I'm, I'm just so excited because it's something I've been looking forward to and watching happen over the course of three seasons now. It's going to be so nice to see it finally pay off and to see the culmination of, of all these little hints they've given throughout four se seasons of this show and so many episodes to see how it will finally pay off 
It's going to be so touching and such a beautiful moment. I'm just absolutely sure of it. And I really cannot wait to see if Will gets possessed by Vecna. There's more Will stuff in there. I will be doing a part two of my Will Byers character study video potentially after season four comes out. But I don't know if I can wait all the way until season five when there's just so much to talk about with Will um, and beyond his sexuality, of course, but like other things to do with his character that I really want to get into and talk about um, theory-wise and just plot-wise and, I don't know, fun stuff. There's a lot to dig into with this character. He's such a cool character and he has so many layers. So you can look out for that video. You can also look out for my reactions to Season 4, Volume 2 and a bunch of other coverage to do with Stranger Things going forward. I have a Hopper character study coming. I might do um, a Mike one. I don't know. There's a lot of characters that I, I think I might want to do. So if you have any recommendations for a character study, which is basically like a fun little video where I deep dive into a character and their dialogue and their scenes and, and analyze like who they are as a person and where their storyline is going and all that fun stuff. If you want to see that, let me know what character you want. Again, I've already done well and I've been working on a part two of that video and I've already been working on Hopper. So if you have any other characters you want me to talk about, specifically underrated ones are super fun, please let me know. And I'm really excited for our boy to officially join canonically the Alphabet Mafia uh, in a way that is so undeniable that even mainstream homophobes cannot deny he is fruity fruity boy. I'm very excited. Thank you guys for hanging out with me and bearing with me as I've talked about this. I love you all so much. You are amazing. Happy Pride everyone. I hope you're staying safe and wearing sunscreen and wearing lots of colors and that you get every possible bit of joy out of this month and validation out of this month as you possibly can. And I hope you all know that this is a safe space for people of all genders or lack thereof, for people of all pronouns, all sexualities or lack thereof, as someone who is queer in many, many ways. Um, <laughs> I, I hope you all know that you can come to me to recommend queer content, to scream about queer content, to drop your queer OTPs and everything. I, I love to hear about it and and yeah, you are loved, you are valid, and so is Will. And I can't wait to watch volume two of season four, Stranger Things. Let's do this. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Especially Will.